During the 1980s, I was a fireman for the one and only Strasburg Railroad. Although I am retired, I often rail fan the area every now and then. However, there is one story about Strasburg that always sends chills down my spine whenever I think about it. And trust me, it's not a VPN sponsor. It was March 9, 1986. Me and my engineer Isabel were operating the afternoon train with the corner of 7002. Since the train wouldn't depart for another hour, Isabel decided to tell me railroad stories she heard from her father. When she finished, he had 30 minutes to spare. Realizing this, she then told me one more story, and this story is what we're going to focus about. Once upon a time, the late Lancaster, Oxford, and Southern Railway had a branch line that ran through Strasbourg. Many locomotives ran the line. But the main focus of this story is 440 number 6, who arrived on the railway in 1886. She had an olive green boiler, a black tender, and a satisfying green whistle that brought joy to everyone that hears it, even during the Great War. Every engine crew wanted to operate the engine and every rail fan wanted to hear the whistle. It was a great time, but then came the cold. Winter finally came to Pennsylvania and was followed by a thick gray fog. On January 16, 1916, number six was tasked with a good strain heading to Strasburg. Her crew consisted of engineer Cameron Jones and fireman Toby James. Little did they know that that would be their first and last run on number 6. At 11.06 p.m., a military van came in munitions was going over the crossing at a bend shade when the tires got stuck on the tracks. And that wasn't bad enough, the poor visibility in the loud engine made it impossible for the driver to see any upcoming trains. Meanwhile, the crew at number 6 were returning home, feeling satisfied with themselves. But when they figured out what was in front of them, they immediately shut on the brakes and bailed out. But it was too late! The aftermath was brutal. The van was in pieces, with half the munitions destroyed. Luckily, there were no human casualties. But on the other hand, number six was the true victim. The cab was burned, the smoke box door was decapitated, and worst of all, the iconic hooter was a goner. And shortly after, the Lancaster's number six got the torch. And it is rumored that on every foggy day or night, number six runs again, trying to find her whistle and reach peace, but never reaching it. When Isabel finished, I was amazed. That was the best story I ever heard, or at least the younger me thought. Afternoon rolled around and we departed. As we moved along, the fog began to settle and the clouds began to rise. This brought my mind back to the story. But I eventually oversaw it, thinking it was a coincidence. As we reached a barrel crossing, we started to slow down and prepare for the ghost whistle. The ghost whistle was a stop. The ghost whistle was a stop where the trees blew the whistle to make an echo, like a ghost. As we started blowing the whistle, we got the echo, as expected. But then came another sound. It was a whistle, but it wasn't ours. It sounded like a Civil War era whistle. At first, I thought it was just a bunch of teenagers messing around. But at that moment, I heard another sound, one that I can't unhear. It was horrifying. It sounded like someone was trying to scream, accompanied by a big, bright yellow light. That was the last straw. It's about 50 reverse and I showed the dear light as we got the brick van all there. We ran 10 to 4 until we reached Newman Place, where the painful banshee was finally out of earshot. I peered out the window to make sure we were followed, which luckily we weren't. 
Me and Isabel stay at Lehman Place until 89 came along to rescue the train. After that, I would take a two-week break for returning to work. Despite the incident, I somehow still love Strasbourg. It will have a special place in my heart, and I recommend going there if you have the chance. But, if you ever go to s Shade Crossing on a foggy day or night, make sure to watch out for the ghost whistle.